Hello, everyone. We're about to get started. I'm going to wait a few minutes. Uh, just let those that are in a different time zone catch up with us and we can get started. So we'll just hold on a few minutes. All right, this is this is Lays Love of Life Can Endure Video Club, and it's all about love. We're it's all about love. We, we do a lot of talking and a lot of discussing about love, and um, just kind of you. Um, yeah, I think that's a little bit better. Um, let me see. Okay, um, we can get started. All right, let's get started. This is Love of Fly Can Endure. Lays, uh, this is a video club, and we really focus all our topics on love and how things are connected with love. And so this particular session, we're, uh, we're covering winning battles with love. So we want to make sure that we understand how to win battles with love and that it is a patient time, but it's also a wonderful time. And it can be done. It can be done. And we want to make sure that we understand that it can be done um, by looking at those that did it and how they did it. Um, we started off by talking about what we really get told about love from our parents. And, uh, we, you know, we discussed that we never get a definition of it or no one ever just sits down and talks to us about what they think it is. Uh, we just live it. We just try to live through it. But the biblical explanation of love is quite different. It's very detailed. And uh, we're talking about in this particular session uh, an unconditional love. The unconditional love is agape love. And that's what this session is about. That's what we win the battles with. And we are happy to introduce that to you. So now if you want to contact me, you can do that by writing to me to Dr. C. B. White, LLC, at 150 Post Office Road, Suite 1027, in Waldorf, Maryland, 20604. Or you can email me at drcbwhite at gmail.com, drcbwhite at gmail.com. Or visit my website at cbwhite.com. And of course, you can uh, revisit all of our broadcasts on our YouTube channel, which is... Uh, Dr. C.V. White Lace. So you can do that, and uh, we welcome you to do that. Uh, we're not going to cover everything that's in our book. Uh, I have written a book, Winning Battles with Love. You can get it on Barnes and Nobles. You can get it on Amazon. Uh, get a copy of it. It will bless your life. And not only that, you will get the parts of it that we are not able to cover in this broadcast, in this particular session. So we want to get started here. We want to... Uh, Get started, and that's what we will do. Um, let's see what we can do to get us started on tonight. Um, we we're talking about Joseph. So once I get down to where I'm supposed to be, 
Uh, I'll give you a quick review on what we're talking about. Um, hi, Elder Evelyn. It's good to see you. Um, hi, how are you? Good to see you. Outstanding. Um, we're talking about Joseph. And uh, the, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me, Elder Evelyn? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. So we're talking about Joseph. And one of the things that we want to just reemphasize and keep reemphasizing that Joseph's destiny was in Egypt. And we talked about last time that the way his father loved him and the way his father knew that he wasn't supposed to leave the Can land of Canaan, he probably would not have sent Joseph to Egypt, nor would he have taken him there. But Joseph had to get there. And so God gave him a dream um, and told him what his future would be. And then Joseph had to walk out that future. Um, so we know that he had to get to Egypt because that was his final destination where he was able to realize what God had called him to do. So now we last, last week we talked about him being the family guy. Um, he his family. Um, now this week we're talking about him being uh, using that gift in the business arena and him having a boss. And we still are talking about his him being on his way to Egypt to an assignment. But Joseph didn't know uh, that his assignment was in Egypt. He didn't know that he was going to Egypt. And he didn't know that he would meet the king of, the, of Egypt. You know, so we see in this session here as we start the second session, we're going to talk about what happened to him next after his family, his brothers sold him into slavery. And they wanted to kill him, but they didn't. Uh, they decided to sell him into slavery to get rid of him forever. Um, now, you have to understand that Joseph had this gift all along. And I'm sure that he was making recommendations to his father. And when they were doing things out of line, he would tell his father. So they were already upset about that. And then his father was uh, uh, treated him as his favorite, and he was his favorite. And they were upset with him about that. So they could never say anything peaceful to him. So we're going to jump into this on tonight. Um, and, and see where we are. Uh, and then for the, see, I just moved away from it before I read it. Okay. All right. Okay, uh Shantice, if you're if you're ready to read. Uh, if you can read this slide. Joseph went in battles with love. Joseph's life took a hard turn and he had even more opportunity to try to demonstrate the love of God during his process of spiritual growth. He is now confronted again with doing his best for someone and they lie on him and cause him to have to take another hard turn. We can see what happens in Genesis 37, 36, verse 36, and the um, Midianites sold him into Egypt into Potiphar, unto Potiphar, an office, an, um, an officer of Pharaoh's, and captain of the guard. He is now at the mercy of his slave owner Potiphar. The Lord was with Joseph, and he prospered. Potiphar was so impressed with his stewardship, he made Joseph overseer over his house to the point Joseph increased his house so much that he did not even know what he had. Potiphar did not check. He trusted Joseph. Okay. So now, when I first read this years and years ago, I was just thinking this is a person's course of life. Just like we think that what happens to us is our course of life. But after we get through with this story of Daniel and Joseph, 
we have to really understand that our, our, our life is not just a course of life. When we belong to God and we have dedicated our hearts to him, he is moving us and he is moving us where we need to be when we need to be it. And, and he brings us to his expected end. So we see here that Joseph was just thinking this was his life. He didn't know that his assignment was in Egypt. And like we said last week, his father never would have taken him there. But everything that he did was lining up with his assignment. He was giving his father information about uh, 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 the best way to do things. And his brother was ang brothers was angry with him because if they didn't do things right, he would tell all of them, you know. And then they were angry with him because he was loved by his father. But now look what is happening to him. His assignment is in Egypt. He's now in Egypt. And now he has to make his way to the king of Egypt. So he still has a process to go. And he's still practicing the things that he needs to practice before they get there, before he gets there. Now he's sold to Potiphar. So he's now a slave. His fate is in the hands of a slave master. So Joseph went through his journey. His journey in life was was a journey that was going to take him to Egypt. So I want each of us to think about this now, because I don't think we've thought about it before. Our journey in life is taking us to where God wants us to go. And it's not necessarily a pleasant place all the time. And it's not necessarily where we want to go. Now look at Joseph's journey. Joseph was born. Uh, he was born when he was born. He was loved by his mother and his father. He was pampered. He was a favorite of all the children. He was treated with honor. He was in a wealthy family. He had all that he needed and everything that he wanted was met and things he asked for he didn't get. But he handled all of this with love. He didn't get big headed. He didn't get arrogant. He didn't think he was better than other people. He still loved everybody. Now remember his brothers was always speaking unpeacefully to him but he never stopped loving them. He was hated because of all of this stuff that was happening to him. He never stopped loving them. And then he had these dreams where God told him in advance the end at the beginning. And so when he went through this process, he had to keep in mind those two dreams that God gave him. So God has told us, us something. God has said something to some of us and maybe all of us, he has said something to what he is going to do in our life, and he gives it to us at the beginning, and then we start walking through the process. But we think we think it's our life's journey instead of us understanding it's God's way of getting us to where we want to go. And, and, and we have to really pay attention and learn what we're supposed to learn on the way. But Joseph is a good example of that, and so we're going to see that, you know, Potiphar was so impressed with his stewardship that he made him overseer over his business, not just his household, but his business. He had fields and things. He had things that he was making money with. And, and, and Joseph uh, was put over those things. And Joseph grew Potiphar's business. Uh, and so much so that he didn't know how much he had. And he didn't even pay attention to it. Part of it would just come in and eat and keep going and just leave it to Joseph because his things just kept growing, you know. Uh, so those of us that are in business and those of us that want to be in business, one of the things that will hold us up is we don't have good stewardship. So we know that good stewardship is something that we should have. Now, we're going to pay attention to what is happening to Joseph so we can identify with what we need to do. Um, some of us may be already doing it. But we can identify that we're not living by half a chance. We're not living by the last bad decision we made because the decisions we make sometimes are necessary for us to get to where God wants us to be. Sometimes they're necessary for us to deal with some things that we don't want to deal with. Sometimes those bad decisions are necessary so we can find out things that we have hidden away that we don't even realize that's in our hearts so that we can deal with those things. So now we see here, Joseph, you know, Joseph was very, very good at what he did because God was with him. But he didn't get the benefit that he got no benefit from growing Potiphar's business. 
He wasn't an heir. He wasn't being paid. He was a slave. But God prospered him. He prospered everything he put his hands to. He, he did that. And so now Joseph is planting seeds. He's planting seeds of love. He's planting seeds of doing his very best in every area where he goes. And he's not getting his crop yet. Other people are getting the benefit of what he's putting in, but he hasn't received his crop yet. So he was still a slave in Egypt going to do what God wanted him to do. Now, remember, he was he was watching over his father's business. And that was the gift that he was going to use in Egypt. Now he's watching over Potiphar's business. That's the gift that he's going to use in Egypt. And he has one more stop to make while he's watching over another group of people's business. And he's growing these businesses. So by the time he gets to Egypt, he will have much experience in using his gifts to prosper business, to prosper government, to prosper everything he puts his hand to. So let's look at how he did that. How does he do that? And we're going to do this one verse by verse, Shantis. So would you read uh, the first verse? Um, here would be verse two. Genesis 39 verses two through six. And the Lord had, and the Lord was with Joseph and he was a prosperous man and he was in the house of his master in the Egyptian. Okay, now, how does that apply to us? It applies to us that we have Holy Spirit. Jesus said when he left, he was gonna ask the father to send Holy Spirit and the father did. And so when, when we have Holy Spirit, we have the Father and we have Jesus also. So we see in John 15 where he says, abide in me and I in you. We are one. So we have the same thing here. We have the same thing that this, this is the Father here, that, that capital L-O-R-D, that's Jehovah. And in, in the Old Testament, that's Jehovah. That's the Father that's with him. Uh, but we have Holy Spirit with us. So we can do what Joseph did with our gifts. We can do that and we can be prosperous with our gifts. And if we're doing it and, and not looking at our life as a, as, as a mistake or us making some bad choices or whatever else we thought that we did to cause us to go through what we're going through, not realizing that we have to go through this in order to get to where God wants us to go. So now we see Joseph here. He had to practice love. So he practiced on his brothers. And now he's practicing on Potiphar's house, Potiphar's wife and all of the servants. And, and, and he's, 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 he's practicing on Potiphar. And so we see here that um, people will see God. People will see God in him because he is demonstrating that through his lifestyle. Okay, read verse three. And his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. Okay, so Potiphar saw that the Lord was with him. How did he see that the Lord was with him? Because he made love a part of his lifestyle. He made his character a part of his life. So he was able to see God. And so a lot of times when we say that we pray, and I've done this, I don't know if you've done it. I don't know if anybody else has done this, but I, I pray sometimes that that uh, the people see God and don't see me, you know, because I know me. I know what's in me. And so I pray that they see God. So this is what was happening to him. He was, uh, uh, he was doing his best for Potiphar. He loved him and his wife and all of the people that he worked with in spite of the fact that he was a slave. Um, and so Potiphar was able to see God with him. Now, um, you know, uh, sometimes people tell me things about myself uh, and I wonder where they got it from. You know, now, now I know that it was the God that they were seeing and not me. Because sometimes they would tell me things and I would say, where did they get that from? How did they see that? What are they talking about? You know, and I remember years ago when I used to go to Baltimore for the School of Prophets a lot, Bishop 
used to send me up there. Um, uh, instead of going himself, he sent me. And um, and and uh, and there was one lady up there that was saying, "You are really genuine. You are really genuine." I'm saying, "What is she talking about? Genuine? What? You know, I didn't know what she was talking about." And or, and then I've had people tell me, "Well, you know, you're too merciful." You, you you give people too much leeway. You ought to do that. And you know, and and people will see people do things to me and they will get mad at them for doing it to me when I was not angry. And I was not upset. And it didn't bother me. As a matter of fact, they were noticing things that people were doing to me that I was not even noticing. Because I had gotten to the place where I cared more about trying to get them to the right place than I cared about where I was. And I wasn't always like that. And so I'm just, uh, I'm, I, after, as I think about that, I believe many of you are going through the same thing. Has anyone out there uh, that's on right now, people tell you that uh, they notice certain things about you and you keep saying, why do people keep saying that? Or why do people keep saying that? You know, it could be anything. It could be uh, people that are saying that you're kind. Uh, they, they could be saying that you put up with, junk from people or they could be saying you're patient or they could be saying you have a lot of mercy or they could be talking about you giving people favor Any, anybody have people talking to you like that saying uh saying something like that did you keep asking yourself what are they talking about anybody yes okay well go ahead will you share Who said that? I said it. Shanti. Oh. oh, okay. Yeah, so just, you know, in the area of, um, I think I said this before, but um, you just, you know, so patient or, you know, um, or you have a lot of uh, patience and I don't know how you do it. Uh, I'm praying for you. <laughs> yeah, and and did you in the beginning think, where did I get that from? <laughs> Absolutely. And that's what I did because I did not understand they were looking at God and they weren't looking at us. They were looking at what we were doing, that we had made a part of our lifestyle and we just wearing it with a coat. We're not even thinking about it anymore. Uh, but but we but I knew that I wasn't always like that. I had to spiritually grow to that place, you know, and, and I didn't even know when I got there. And anybody else have a testimony like that that's on right now? Anybody else? Okay. If not, let's go. Good evening, Elder. Good evening. How are you? I am well, thank you. And yes, I do have a testimony. <laughs> Go ahead. Yes, mine is, I I know when I was, when I first, when I first came to Heritage, I was at a place that, you know, I just felt really, really alone. And I remember um, after being there for a while, um, Pastor Diane, that um, when she was there, she said to me, she said, oh, your countenance has changed. I said, and I didn't understand what she meant. But then I learned, I, I le later found out she meant that my spirit, my spirit had begun to come back to life. So that was really a, um, a testament for me to know that God God was still working on me and working in my life. Right. And that was and that was her able to see that. It was being seen. It was being seen because it was being demonstrated in your life and she was able to see it. And so that's what we're talking about. This is what happened to Joseph. Potiphar was able to see that God was with him. Uh, and so he uh, he took advantage of that. Uh, but Joseph got no benefit from him, but he still loved him. Okay, now now read verse four. And Joseph found grace in his sight, and he served him 
and he made him overseer over his house and all that he had, he put into his hand. Okay. So when you allow God to grow you up and, and, and people to be able to see him in your life, one of the things that happened is that people began to trust you. You know, if they see that you're real and you're not fake and you're not trying to pretend and that you really love them, when they discover that you really love them, they begin to trust you. And then, then they begin to listen to you when you start telling them about the word of God, even if you're not, even if you're not giving the chapter and verse uh, of, of the Bible and you're just talking, they start paying attention to that because they know you love them. And when a person know that you love them, it's a lot easier for you to be able to help them grow and, and, and develop a relationship that would be more like Christian fellowshipping or even just fellowshipping with somebody that's not saved to, uh, to cause them to want to be saved. So it's really a, a wonderful thing when we're able to allow God to be seen through us. And because we have Holy Spirit, that can happen. You see in these four verses, the Lord is up here four times, which means this is how Joseph did it. We can't do it by ourselves. We need God. We need Holy Spirit. And Joseph did it. He must have spent a lot of time. Like we last time when we, uh, not last week, but week before last, and the week before that, we talked about Daniel. And Daniel praying three times a day. But you know what? Joseph didn't have any friends. So I know that he talked to God. He didn't have anybody to talk to. It doesn't say he was talking to his father and his mother when he was home. And he certainly wasn't talking to his brothers because they didn't ever have anything peaceably to say to him. And so he was just by himself all the time. And I can imagine he spent a lot of time in worship. He spent a lot of time in prayer. And however he could connect with God, he stayed with him. And so therefore, God was able to bless him and bring him step by step to a place of greatness where he could really use him. He didn't know he was going to go to Egypt. He didn't know he belonged in Egypt. I can imagine he was just longing for the day that he could get back home. If he could figure out how to get back home to where he loved, to, to, to the people he loved. Uh, but he didn't know that. So it's really uh, good for us to know that um, Potiphar knew that the Lord was with him because he could see it. You know, and it's really um, um, good for us to understand that favor and love go together. He was getting he was getting a tremendous amount of favor while he was going through this process of loving people. Okay, verse five and six. John. And it came to pass from the time that he had made him overseer in his house and and over all that he had that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. And the blessing of the Lord was upon all that he had in the house and in the field. And he left all that he had in Joseph's hands and he knew not what he had, what he had, what he had okay. saved, what he had saved the bread, which he did eat. And Joseph was, a goodly person and well favored. Okay. So we know then that we do have the favor of the Lord. And if we're married, we know that we have extra favor because the men have the responsibility to speak to God on behalf of the family. And when they become one, there's nothing that they can't do together. And in addition to that, uh, there there's favor that the wife brings to the family. So that's all available to us right now so if we are just if we're just not married then we have the father because he's our father we have all kinds of ways that we are connected so that we can do what joseph did and but we can't do it without the lord we can't do it without holy spirit so let's take a look at this next slide here and see what's happening to joseph go ahead and read this one sean even as a slave, Joseph continued to love. He had to make an adjustment of accepting what he was doing and where he was and giving his best 
which was all he ever did. He did he had done nothing to deserve this grief and pain, but did not allow it to make him angry, bitter, or complacent. He loved the work and the people. He was a good steward, just as Daniel was, of all that he put in his hands. He was no longer in the position of being the favorite in the house of his father. But the Lord was with him and he became the favorite in every house that he ever lived in. He did his best in every house. He was no longer in a position of honor, but he did, but he never said a word. And no one knew what had happened in his in him because he continued to love his family and Potiphar, and his trust in God. Wow. Now that is amazing. You know, now that is amazing because now keep in mind, Joseph had to get to Egypt. God could have gotten him to Egypt a lot faster without going through all of this stuff that he went through. But then Joseph had to be prepared to carry the anointing that would be on him to be able to rule to rule and, and manage and be a good steward over everything in Egypt and all of the nations that were under Egypt and all of the uh, if all of the property and all of the food that he was supposed to get ready for the famine. Joseph did that with the Lord's help and he was able to practice doing it for people without getting any benefit from it. He got no benefit from it. He got no benefit from Potiphar, and he got no benefit when they when they tried to kill him, leave his father's house. They 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 tried to make sure he didn't get his inheritance. So now Joseph was always doing his best. He was always loving people. He did not cause or do anything to cause people to hate him or treat him badly. Yet he suffered pain and grief. He suffered a lot of it. He did not allow it to get him angry and bitter. And he never said a word about it. Like Daniel and like Jesus, he never complained. He never complained. There's not one instance in the word of God where he complained. But this was great training for Joseph. He was in charge of all of Potiphar's house, the fields and his business. This was what he would have to do in Egypt. He was practicing but he was a slave doing it and he wasn't complaining. And so God was able to train him and in a humbling position. See, he was in an honorable position at home and God was training him, but then he put him in a humble position and he still did the same thing. He still loved him. He still did his best. He was a slave and get no benefit, absolutely no benefit from it. All slaves get, there's a place to eat and a place to stay. That's all they get. Every, I think everybody understands what's happening with, Je with Joseph. So now he's coming to a place where he's still not where he needs to be because he's got to get into the palace. He's got to get to the king, but he's in part of his house, so he can't stay in part of his house. So it could be an easy, pleasant way to get out of part of his house, but for Joseph it isn't. And that's the same way for many of us. Because many of us look back at our life and we said, man, you know what? If I had known what I know now, I would have done something different. But you couldn't. Because if you are on God's path, if you're on his plan, you're going through the process that you need to go through. You're getting it where you need to get it. You are in relationship with the person that you need to be in relationship with so that you can deal with the stuff that's in you. And when you deal with the stuff that's in you and you grow spiritually, and you grow physically, you you know you you don't start this as an adult. You start as a child, you know, and so we see that God does this before the foundation of the world. So we know from people like Jeremiah, and we know from people like Samuel that they you don't you don't just start when you get to be an adult. When you're a child, you are going through things that make you prepare you to be who you are supposed to be, and so. It's very important that we understand 
that we're going through a process that we need to go through to get to where we're going. Just like Joseph, you don't know, and I don't know what, what, what the place is going to be, but we know what the end is going to be because God tells us, look, I'm going to, I'm going to do this with you. I'm going to have you do this and this and this and this. And you know, when God first told you, you weren't ready to do it. And I know there's some things he's told me that I haven't done yet that haven't come up, uh, that haven't come to pass yet, but I'm encouraged. I'm encouraged because I know that just like Joseph had to go through this, whatever he went through, that I'm going to get through what I need to get through to get to those places where God told me that I was going to be, you know? So you're in good company if you've been through some stuff. You're in good company if you have somebody in your life that's getting on your nerve. You are in good company if you have somebody who don't celebrate you and don't treat you right. You're in good company because that's what Joseph had to go through. And he still had to love them. And they even tried to kill him. So you're in great company because, you know, we're hoping that nobody's trying to kill us. But we do know that they, they challenge us. And that sometimes it's the closest people to us that do that because they're the only ones that can. So we, we're looking at Joseph here. We're just seeing, has anybody ever really thought about that? That Joseph had to be in Egypt and how was he going to get there? You know, when you were reading this story before, did it ever dawn on you that God was in control and he was moving him? It was God that was moving him step by step and training him moment by moment with everything that he would need to be able to do what he had to finally do in the end when he reached the destiny of the place where God wanted him to be. Okay, so let's read this next one, Sean. <laughs> Potiphar's wife wanted Joseph, but he refused to dishonor his master. Notice that Joseph was explaining to her about sinning against her husband and God. She was not interested in that because she had already made up her mind to sin against her husband. Joseph knew that was not something that he could do. And she grabs his clothes and they came off and he ran. At first, he was confronted with keeping his mouth shut. Now he has to run. Joseph must have been lonely. The Bible did not say that he had anyone else, anyone close to him. He must have wanted a wife, someone to love and someone to love him, but was not, uh, but was not the way to satisfy that need. But that was not the way to satisfy that need. It is difficult sometimes to obey God, but it's always possible. We can see what happens in Genesis 39, verses 7 through 13. Okay, let's, let's read that. Read that, Sean. Genesis 39, verses 7 through 13. And it came to pass after these things, that his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph, and she said, lie with me. But he refused and said unto his master's wife, behold, my master wotteth not what is with me in the house. He have committed all that he have to my hand. There is none greater in this house than I. Neither has he kept back anything from me but thee. Because thou art his wife, how then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? And it came to pass, as she spake to Joseph day by day, that he hearkened not unto her, to lie by her or to be with her. And it came to pass about this time that Joseph went into the house to do his business, and there was none of the men of the house there within. And she caught him by his garment, saying, lie with me. And he, he left his garment in her hand and fled and got him out. And it came to pass when she saw that he had left his garment in her hands and was fled forth. Okay, we're going to stop right there because we're going to point out something here. Uh, she was doing this every day. 
Can you imagine Joseph putting up with that every day? She was at making advances and flirting with him every day he had to deal with it. And every day he had to come into the house. It probably never occurred to him that she would attack him and try to force him to do it. But he just kept quiet. He kept quiet about it. He never said anything to Potiphar. He never said anything to anybody else about what she was doing. He kept quiet. So that was all he thought he had to do until she grabbed his clothes and tried to force him. Now, how many of us know Potiphar's house was not the last place that Joseph had to be? Once Joseph did the work of making sure that Potiphar prospered according to what God, how God um, uh, was helping him do it, once Joseph understood that, it was time to move on. It was time to go to the next place of training. How was he going to get there? It could have been an easy way. You know, we always think we have an easy way. We always think we do. And sometimes we just don't have an easy way to do it. And one of the reasons we don't have an easy way to do it is because there are some things in us that we need to get rid of on this level, in this testing period, in this place with these people so that we can be and do what it is we're supposed to do. We can't do that ourselves sometimes. Sometimes we just can't do it because sometimes we don't even know the stuff that's in there. So we have to go ahead and allow God to strip away the stuff that needs to be stripped away so that we can go to the next period of training and we can go to the next period of testing and we can go to the next place of preparation. It wasn't, he was in Egypt, but it wasn't the king's palace. So he couldn't stay there. Who, what, who was the person that had to get him out of there? It was Potiphar's wife. Do you think Potiphar would have given up a slave like Joseph? How many think Potiphar would have given up Joseph? Who, who, who thinks Potiphar would have given up Joseph? With him doing such a, such a great job, you know, the next place he was supposed to go to was to jail. Would Potiphar have sent him to jail? Anybody. Does anybody think Potiphar would have sent him to jail if he hadn't done something really bad? I'm no. sorry. Uh, no, he, wouldn't, he would not have sent him to jail. No, but but his next place was jail. So how was he going to get there? He he had to go to jail next. Yeah, there had to be a, a someone like a Judas. <laughs> yeah, it had to be someone like a Judas. And that was someone Potiphar. like his brother. Yes, yes. It had to be someone like his brother. And that was part of his wife. And at the right moment, she made her move so that he could make his move. Does anybody think about your life like that? Just think about your life like that. You know, what things that you thought were terrible that taught you the best lesson that you have learned? A good lesson. It caused you to grow spiritually. It caused you to let things go. It causes you to quit caring about things that don't matter. It, it really is important for us to understand what's going on here with this. You know, Joseph had kept quiet, but now it's time for him to move on. He was on his way to the king of Egypt. And sometimes, you know, some things have to happen to cause us to move forward or to move toward the thing that we have to go to or come to the next place that we have to do our training with. Uh, because Joseph could not stay in Potiphar's house. He did not know why. You know, it seemed that he was in trouble again. And he had done nothing wrong. You know, he had done nothing wrong. It seemed like he was in trouble again. He's running into some mean people again, some hurtful people again, some, some people who rejected him again, some people who trying to kill him again. And yet he had done nothing wrong. Nothing. Yet he still loved them. But this was also a part of his process. He learned to love those 
that he worked hard for, but were not able to be thankful or appreciative. How many times have we made the statement that they, they just don't appreciate me? They didn't even say thank you. You know, they, they, they didn't even consider me. They, they wouldn't listen to anything I had to say. You know what? Could, could it be you that need the training? Could, could it be you? Could it be me that need to change? Could it be something in me that needs to be brought to the surface so that I can be free of whatever that is? You know, um, the most I hear people say is disrespect. They, 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 just, they just hate to be disrespected. There's so many people just hate to be disrespected. You know, and, and um, but perhaps that's a place to, that's a place to help you deal with pride. Perhaps that's a place to help you deal with uh, a holier than out that I you know, a holier than you attitude. Perhaps that's a place that humbles you to understand that you're not the only one. There's a lot of people that are having a, a lot more trouble than you are. There's a lot of people that's going through a lot more than I am. Uh, but we think that what's happening to us is the greatest thing and the hardest thing. And most of the time, the things that we are concerned about are not really important at all. But we think they are. We think they are. But so as far as Joseph was concerned, nothing was more important than him trusting God and him loving people and him doing his best. There was nothing that he wanted more. It wasn't food, it wasn't position, it wasn't power, it wasn't authority, it wasn't being over something, it wasn't leading something. He just did the best he could in every situation where he found himself. And his whole life demonstrates that God himself was moving him through this process, bringing him to a place of greatness where he could use him for what he brought him to the earth to do. And he agreed with God and he went through it without complaining and without being concerned about it by just loving people and doing his very best. God made sure that he prospered. And not only that, he prospered Potiphar for Joseph's sake. He prospered Potiphar, got all of that benefit, all of the extra money, all of the extra cattle, all of his house was growing. He probably got a lot of more service because he had more stuff to do. He prospered Potiphar for Joseph's sake. Wow. And, but Joseph didn't get any of that. His crop hadn't started coming up yet, but Potiphar's did. And so that's really important. It's really important for us to grab a hold of that and for us to understand that our life's journey is in the Lord's hands when we let it be. And if we tell the Lord, Lord, you know, I'm in your hands. You really are. I really am. He's big enough to take us to his expected end without us understanding it all the time. Because how many people, does anybody think Joseph understood what was happening to him except for the fact that he was going to, whatever, his sheaves was going to be uh, over his brother's sheaves and he was going to rule over his mother and father? Do you think Joseph had any idea what that mean and the greatness of the position that God was putting him in? Does anybody, does anybody have any thoughts on that? I don't think he had an idea of linking the two together. His dream of the greatness and the level that he was going to walk in of authority and what he had to go through to get there. I, I don't think he had any idea. I don't either. Well, Jati, since you're talking, can you see how God was training him how to rule over other people's property, how to rule over it well, and how to be the greatest steward as possible he could be over it? Can you see how he was being trained? Yes, I think I remember in the in reading 
uh, about Joseph, how his father actually trained him in various areas to prepare him because of the knowledge he had, he was able to demonstrate that as a leader, no matter where he was. Right. And so he got to, he got to work on that in his father's house. He got to work on that in Potiphar's house. And now he's getting ready to go to his last stop before he gets to the king. So let's, let's read this last one here. In her anger and scorn, she accused Joseph of falsely of doing what she had invited him to do. And as a result, Joseph ended up in jail. Potiphar put Joseph in jail for what he did not do. Joseph demonstrated love with both of them. With the Lord's help, Joseph did everything he could to make their lives prosperous, but that was not enough. Joseph's integrity and his character should have been enough for his master, but it wasn't. This was yet another opportunity for Joseph to become angry and bitter. He could have made a decision not to love people anymore, but he did not do that. He assessed his situation in the prison and began to be a good steward there. He never thought, he never thought he would be a prisoner. Joseph did not know it, but he was on his way to the king of Egypt. Okay. So does everyone understand what that means? in terms of your life, you know, uh, Joseph is approaching what love does for him, but he's not there yet. He's got one more stop to make. So if, if, if anyone, can, can anyone give uh, uh, a comment on that? Just looking back over your life and, 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 and understanding that you were being prepared for something you're doing now or something that you hope to be doing based on what God has given you and has told you about what you're going to be doing? Does anyone have that information from the Lord? Anybody? Yeah. I'm sorry, you were asking if anyone had information about what the Lord wants you to do and how your life, how you've been preparing for it not even knowing that you were being prepared for it. Well, if you're if you're saying what I think you're saying, and as far as a comment about it, the only thing that kept coming to me is in this process is the only way up is down. <laughs> um, the things that you have to uh, overcome and um, the process that you have to be put through um, to be ready for a position that God has called you to with authority. I say you, but I, I can see that in my life. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to give you my example. I'm going to just be transparent with you so you can really understand. That's right, John. That is right. But so that the others can understand, because I think you got it. Um, and you can make another comment if you want after I say this. When I was working, uh, when I was working in corporate America, I worked for the Navy as a civilian. And, um, you know, I worked in a very hostile environment for 30 years and I would get a project and I would get it and I would start it from scratch. I would start it from scratch. Now I am an apostle. Uh, when God shared that with me, I couldn't even spell apostle. So what happened on my lifetime while I was working, and I think I might've done this five or six times. I'd have to count them. Now that I retired in 99, so I'm, I'm not really thinking about how many times it was, but I would get something, I would build it up to a certain area and they would let me do it because it didn't seem very important to them at the time and they had to keep me busy, you know. Uh, they didn't, they, you know, they wanted to use me to do what they wanted to do, but they didn't want to give me any credit for having anything worthwhile doing. So I would get projects and these projects were R&D projects, and I worked on things like artificial intelligence and all kinds of different things like that with contractors with building 
new things that had never been done before. And when I would get it to where I could get a promotion and I could get more money for actually managing it and running it, they would take it from me and tell me that they need to give, well, we need to give this to somebody who can handle it. We don't think you can handle it. And I'm thinking, I built this. I built it from scratch. Why do you think I can't handle it? Well, you know, that is the process of what apostles do. I didn't even, God hadn't even told me I was an apostle then. You know, so I was doing that. I must have done it five or six times. And every time I did it, I would be so heartbroken. And I would say, well, maybe the next time they won't take it from me. If I build it up, they won't take it from me. If I, if I put it together, they won't take it from me. But they did it every time. Why? Because that's the way it works with apostles. You know, and I just, I was being trained. And I didn't know that I was being trained. And so I think many of us went through the same kind of things in the same kind of way, you know. Um, I didn't know that I, I, and, and I was dealing with these difficult people. So when I was young, when I was a child, I had to deal with difficult people. I had to learn how to get along with them. I had to learn how to survive. So when I got into my job with these folk I'm talking about now, I was already prepared to deal with these difficult people who were making things hard for me to go ahead and do what I had to do. And I did it. But I didn't connect it with God bringing me through a process so that I could be ready to function as an apostle. And so I'm, I'm just sharing that with you so that you can understand why what I'm asking you. Have you noticed that God brought you through some things in your life to bring you to the place where you are now doing or you're preparing to do something he told you that he wanted you to do? Okay, can anybody else come in now? Elder C, um, I can see I, I can see that in my life, but for me, I I believe what I did was I aborted. In many situations, I aborted my um my training because I did not understand how it was leading me to what God has called me to do. So not not having someone there to to guide me and help me to understand what my purpose in life was in regards as it related to God, what God's purpose was for my life. Many times I aborted, I aborted my assignment because I did not understand how it was moving me to where I needed to be. So for me, it, it worked in the opposite. Now I'm seeing, I'm beginning to see, um, being at Heritage, I, I now understood that each process is part of each assignment is part of the process to me getting where I need to be for God. Right. But even when you abort it, even when you abort it, that was a part of your process. That was a part of it because now that you, now that you're saying that you did that, when you aborted, you went to another place. And the next place you went was a part of your training process. Perhaps if you had not aborted it, you wouldn't have moved. Okay? That is interesting. That is an interesting perspective. And that's the perspective I'm teaching. Joseph didn't understand any of this. He didn't understand any of this. According to the way he was acting, he should have been getting all kinds of good and wonderful things. All kinds of good crops should have been coming up for him because he was planting good seed. But he never saw any good crops because he hadn't come to the ground where they were going to come up. Elder C? Yes. Uh, can I say something? Yes. So when Gwen was talking about the aborting and avoiding process, I believe that um, some of that pl uh, played a role in my life as well. When I think about um, certain experiences that call me, caused me to withdraw or take another turn to not have to deal with it, 
And then you said um, it was a, that all of it is a part of the process. And what I remember um, one time in, in the teaching, um, when Bishop was teaching about a specific subject, he mentioned God calculating everything we will ever do, both right and wrong, every turn, every detour, it's all still calculated in our process. <laughs> and it's not taking God by surprise. So it still was all a part of the plan. Everything, yes. everything. Yes, yes. That's what I'm, that is the point I'm trying to get over to everybody. You know, um, I think I used to say, man, if I had known this, I would have done something really different than a decision I made, you know. I would have done something different, but God already knew what I was going to do. He already knew the turns I was going to make. He already knew the decisions I was going to make, and he orchestrated it. You see, this is this is the thing that's really important for us to remember. Our Father Jehovah, Jehovah, our Father. I'm not talking about Jesus, and I'm not talking about Holy Spirit. I'm talking about Jehovah. Our Father is a planner, a provider, and a protector. That's what fathers do. Why would he not do a perfect work in our life? Why would we be different? He does. It's just that we, we, we didn't think that he would. I know I didn't. I didn't think that he would do me like he did everybody else. That was a deception of the devil. He would perfectly plan how we were going to get through life and our life journey so that we could end up where we should be and do what he wanted us to do. And so that's what that, that's the point I was making with Gwen, and that's the point that you're making, and that's the point that I'm making for everybody to understand. Uh, your life journey, God has got it. And he knew we were going to make... Uh, a turn, you know, and uh, and I told you one time, and I was praying with my prayer partner. We were talking about getting off the path, and 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 going in the wrong direction, and then having to turn around. And then God showed <clears throat> her because she's a prophet, a huge hand, and it looked like she was talking about it was like a whole bunch of little little baby chickens, and 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 they were and they were going down this road, and they. And they started turning off the road to go somewhere else. And the hand reached out and gently pushed all of these little chicks back on the road. And that's how God showed us that he takes care of it. So I just wanted to share that. You know, I wanted to share that. And and I would just enjoy the, any, any, any compliments or, or, uh, of what God has done for any one of us, giving him the glory and complimenting him on the great work that he does, because we're we're here and we're still doing and we're still going, you know. Joseph had one more stop to make, and that would be jail before he could meet the king. And then this that would be his place of destiny when he met the king. But jail was where he would learn to love those that no one else loved. Joseph had done nothing to be in jail. He kept showing seeds of good character, of God's character, of integrity, of love, but his crop was about to come up. You know, and like I said, if we look over our lives, we will we will soon discover when we really grab a hold of what what we, what God is sharing with us on tonight that we're on track. We're on track. God's got this. And we have to let him do what he does best, and that's be God in our life. You know, when we're going through things and when we're learning things, there it's not pleasant. It's not happy things. I can't I, I bet you no one on here can say that when they were getting rid of things in their lives and when they were overcoming things, that it was it was not painful. Because it is painful. And you know, so we remember that Joseph couldn't stay in part of his house. That was comfortable. He was probably still trying to figure out how to get back to his father's house. But his purpose and destiny was with the king of Egypt. And he had another place that he had to go. So 
he had to make some stops on the way, but the final destination was with the king. So what about you and I? Are we on our final destination route? And if we are, what are we doing? And if we're not, are we cooperating? Are we going along without complaining? Are we loving people like we should? Are we believing and trusting God more than the circumstances and situations that are surrounding us? Are we believing that God has a plan for our life because he is the planner, provider, and protector of us that he would do his best toward us, that he loved us so much that he would not let us be in a bad place or even go to a bad place because we would protect our children from doing things like that. Why would he not protect us? And so that's that's where we have to stop tonight because we're out of time. We're out of time. We have to next week we have to visit the next place that Joseph went and, and see what happened there and um and get some more insight. But we're out of time, so I'm gonna just take the time now to um before we pray is to to ask everybody, uh, did you learn something? to help you understand your, your, your journey to your destiny. Uh, and so what did you learn tonight to help you understand that you're on your way if you're not there already, that you are, you are to make it. Uh, you're able to make it. Good morning, good afternoon. For me, Elder C, I, I came in a little late. I was in another call. But I came in. Um, what I did, le what I have learned through what you you talked about just now, is that no matter no matter where I am in my journey, whether I abort it or whether I stick with it and I'm pushed forward out of it, it's all a part of the journey. Yes. So embrace it. <laughs> yes. Embrace it and keep moving. Yes, that's that's where we are. That's where we are. How about you, Arnaz? Did you learn something to help you tonight? Keep going. Yes. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear can. me? Yes. Okay. Uh, first, I want to say that um, I hadn't really thought about the journey that Joseph took to get where he he was. God was taking him. So that that enlightened me a lot when you was when you was talking about that. And then I thought about my journey, all the things that I went through to get where I am and where. God want what the Lord want me to be, and you know, just I, I review that Sunday school lesson at the church, and I do things like that, and and I want to be and to speak out about the Lord, be more forthcoming in, in His blessings and in His uh, salvation and the things that He's done for me, for my life, and the people that I, that's around me that I know. So I don't know if that's exactly what you you need you wanted from me, but that's how I feel. I just open up about how that made me open my eyes about Joseph when you spoke those words that we all take a journey to get where God wants us to be. And then sometimes it's not a straight path. Sometimes a lot of things happen to us on that path. God takes his hand. He just moves us back on the path where we need to be. Okay, that's good. How about you, Evelyn? I thank God that I'm still on my journey and he has shown me how to love people that have taken advantage of me and continue to show them love uh, the way that he loved me and he loved them. And I thank God for the journey that I am on at this present. Okay. Uh, what about what about you, Chantis? Um, this was definitely jam packed with uh, revelation, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and information. I think it was more um, a reminder because I feel like. God was showing me this all through my process. It was just a matter of me embracing it and being okay with it. And it also encouraged me to 
operate out of the fruit of the spirit and have patience in understanding that um, there's a time, a specific Kairos moment, you know, in my life where things, certain things are manifesting or gonna manifest once I get through a certain process instead of feeling like, oh, well, I missed it or it's just taking too long, you know? <laughs> so that was really, um, this was really an encouraging for me and a reminder. Okay, Gail, do you have anything that you can say? Welcome, Gail. If you don't, that's okay. Okay, she may be on her phone. Okay, well, we're getting ready to pray so we can close out. But I do want everyone to understand that love is takes time. When you're winning with love, it takes time. It's not a microwave instant thing. It, it, it takes time for people to make the adjustment and for them to even believe that you love them, you know, uh, especially if they have not been loved and they have some issues with, with hurt and pain and abuse. It's, it's going to take some time for people to understand that you really love them and for them to grow into the place where you win. You win these battles. And, and we're going to see what happened here with Joseph on this next go round. And, and I encourage you, don't be in a hurry about what's happening to you. Don't be in a hurry. Uh, and don't be discouraged when things happen that you don't necessarily desire to happen. And don't get weary in well-doing. When you're doing the best you can and the best you know, and you're walking in all the light you know, and it seems like every time you try to make a move, somebody do something, somebody say something, somebody don't appreciate you, somebody shoot you down, or somebody push a button that you don't have wholeness and healness, healing from. Because God is with you. He's with us, and he's taking care of this. If we would just cooperate and not fight him, but fight the devil. So we I encourage you all to just be patient and watch and wait. God bring you to his expected end. And it's a good and not evil. So I'm excited about him giving this to us. Okay. Anybody have any other comment before we pray? Anybody? Um, I was just going to say that this was a very, 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 very great lesson and very thought provoking and um, has caused me to really reassess a number of situations and circumstances that have and is occurring in my life. And I, well, for me, it's helpful one to know that there is a process and to ask God, what is the purpose or lesson for the, event or circumstance that might be occurring in my life and what am I should be doing or getting out of this or what is the lesson to be learned um, are all things that I gained from this lesson and I really had never visited or assessed Joseph's life the way it was broken down tonight. So I'm just very grateful to have been a part of the lesson. Okay. Inez, did you have something else to say? I, I had to mute you. I was going to ask you to mute so that we could hear what she was saying. But if you had something else to say, did you have something else to say? Because I muted your, I muted your, are you done? Me? No, yeah, not Inez. <laughs> Not you, dear. Inez. <laughs> Inez, she may be gone. Okay, let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, I just thank you for these beautiful, wonderful people and this great body of believers that we are having a believers meeting and we're, and we're listening to you and we're trying to understand how Joseph did this and how you said what you said about him and what you said about Daniel, about, you know, that you really do really want us to 
exemplify who you are and your characteristics to be in our life and us to demonstrate them so that people can see you and allow people to see you through us without having to see us. And God, we thank you and we give you glory and we give you honor. We thank you God, for blessing whether we put our hands to. We thank you, God, for blessing our families and blessing our lives and bringing us to your expected end. And we know it is a good and not evil. So we thank you for it and we praise you for it and we give you glory for each other. And we thank you for giving us understanding, wisdom, and revelation about what to do. And it, uh, uh, just patiently wait for you to do your perfect work in us. We thank you for that. And we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. That's it. Thank you all. I'll Amen. see you next week. We're going to talk about him being in jail. That's going to be exciting. We'll be talking about some things that we've not thought about before. Uh, and that's his last stop before he gets to his destiny. And, and perhaps it'll let us figure out what our last stop is or if we're already there and don't know that we're there. We may already be there. This is going to be exciting. It's going to be exciting. So we'll see you I next week. I will definitely jump on to next week, Elder, if I can, if I'm um, able to. Okay. This was good. All right. Good seeing you yes. all. Next week now, the 4th of July week, uh, Monday is going to be the 3rd of July. We're not going to be on. I know that you're going to be out with your families. The 4th of July, that week, we're, we're not going to be on that week. But we are, will be on next week. Okay? Okay, all right. Let's say good night to everybody. Good night, Shantis. Good night, Elder. Good night, Gail. Good night. Good night, Gwen. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone.